Okay, okay guys, welcome back. Uh, I was just explaining about the coupon code, but the cat winning the rat matchup, yeah. My cat's really good. Okay, uh, let us introduce the players. So, Whistler kind of cheated because he knows who played because he's on IRK, so I'm not going to give it to him. And uh, TT1 kind of guessed because Whistler said, so I'm going to give it to him. Uh, but let's introduce the players quickly, starting us off. For IRK, it's going to be Marwin. Marwin kind of started as a lone player from IFU, and then he kind of become a mainstay of IRK's roster towards the end of Season 1, and he is a really, really powerful Ukrainian Terran player. Uh, so it's really cool to see him here. And he is up against the Polish powerhouse himself, STPL rank number 4. It is Koga. He's actually 4 for 1 against Terran, and he did beat Marwin previously. Yeah, I, I think Koget, it's like hard to send a better player from Net Wars out. I mean, uh, especially since um, Bonneth left. I'm like, well, you know, there's only so many good uh, Polish players out there, but there are actually quite a few of them. The map is Neo Tornado. Yep, New Tornado what, what a map. is a really cool map for TVT as well. It's very easy to split down the middle. Uh, there are those small little choke points on the high grounds, which make it very difficult uh, to move the units around so uh, I, I'm just gonna get straight into this game it's midnight in the UK uh, so if we have a two hour long TVT that's gonna be an interesting day for me tomorrow but there's always the chance the six minute curse will ruin uh, well not ruin but like six minute games are not very fun so let's get into the game and let's see what's gonna happen as we head into this ace match Okay, starting us off in the 12 o'clock position, it's IRK's player Marwin, fighting in the purple. And his opponent, uh, one of the best Polish players right now, playing in blue, is Terran. It's Kogut. Playing for Net Wars, of course. Now, uh, I'd just like to say I know Aggie is going now as the ace match starts, but I would like to point out he lives in Sweden where it's now 1am, so don't take this as a spoiler that, oh, he's leaving, so I guess Net will win, or Net Wars win even. Uh, I think <laughs> I think it's more he is legitimately tired. I, I can feel that. And so can Rapid. We're both equally tired now. <laughs> that is definitely true. Whew. Okay, well, we are uh, about to get into our final game of the night, so big thanks to everybody for watching. Don't forget to use that coupon code LSTPL on Matcherino. You've got the link to that in the chat, or you can type exclamation mark donate, and that's how you can do it. You can also follow the channel right above and uh, follow STPL on Twitter at STPL TV, and then of course also um, STPL TV for all of the YouTube bots if you missed any of the games from tonight. Yeah. And also another quick shout out to our amazing sponsors at Liquipedia. Uh, they are donating towards the prize pool. There is going to be a bracket contest when we get into the playoff stage. That's going to be about 13 weeks away from now, but uh, it's still going to be awesome uh, for them to be supporting Brood War again. Obviously, Liquipedia started with Brood War, and it's certainly not going to end with Brood War either. So if you can contribute to uh, Liquipedia in any way in terms of editing the wiki, it's going to be a huge help to everyone else who helps with wiki or with the wiki as well. So, uh, if you can contribute, yikes! Um, I mean, I'm just trying taking a look at the game, and I'm already seeing this. Look at this SCV micro. Oh, he was about to kill it. I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. It looked a lot cooler than it was. Um, but hey, we get a TVT, and I'm excited to see how long this can go. I want Kix to never go to bed so he can feel like <laughs> me when I cast a TPL. You know the crazy thing? Like, when I look what? back 16, 17 months ago, it's oh my god, he gassed all. <laughs> I didn't realize that was Koget's gas. I just thought that was Marwin, but apparently yeah. not. Well, yeah. Purple Do you want versus blue is like uh, white versus yellow, or yellow versus orange. It's actually really hard to tell the difference, but on hey, the mini map, yeah, you can get the gas steel. Um, so it's going to be much, much later. 
Yeah, and you want to know uh, what I was about to say before. Essentially, do you want to know how long I waited to see a TBT in SCPL Season 1? I waited so long. And Season 2, Day 1, we've had two T no, three TBTs. This is the third one. That's crazy. Crazy kicks. Crazy. TBT, though, on definitely one of my favorite matchups. There's lots of variation in the builds you can do. Now, obviously, we did see both of them go for the same build. We did see Gas Steel, uh, but it's kind of... Will we see Wraiths? Will we see Mass Dropships? Will we see Tank Goliath Wars? This is going to be kind of where we'll see the sort of foundation for that happening. Yeah, uh, that's actually a good way to put it. Some I'm trying to make it all historical. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can I can dig it. Uh, how? Uh, what, what are we doing here? We still have more marines. Oh, look, it's two versus one. Oh, wait, what? No, how? It was Marwin. two versus two, and one of them won yeah, somehow. Ma Marwin used the SCV. The SCV was uh, doing that. Nice, nice aggression from Marwin here. I mean, his uh, SCV micro is pretty amazing. So this is marine micro. Look at this. There's going to be another dead marine. Yeah. I mean, it's still not actually dealing damage, but it, they're trading Marines pretty effectively. And this is really something cool that you can do. I've, I haven't seen this in a while. Yeah, and if you think that they're playing Ukraine to Poland as well, so they're probably on turn rate 24, which which is really helping. Like, it's so difficult to do these kind of crazy micro situations. Like, if he gets under that tree and uses the, like, mischance, I would just call Marwin a god here and then. Oh my god, is he? Oh my god! Uh, Wow, he moved his marine? What? Oh, he is going under the tree. Ah, uh, he was for a second. Yeah, but now he's just gonna straight up lose the marine. So finally, Kogut has come out on top of the marine wars, but you usually don't see Terran players make that many marines. This is such yeah. a cool move to do after the gas steal. Yeah, this is coming back to that gas steal. I know TT1 said, and you just said as well, but I've been thinking it for the past few minutes. Like, essentially the gas steal meant that Marwin had to kind of do something. And building more marines just kind of makes sense, because his factories were delayed, he, obviously any extra attack was delayed. And look at this! Yeah. He's got his vulture first, and he's doing more damage! Well, you say that, he still hasn't killed an SCV yet, so... Okay, but he's bruising them, there we both go. emotionally and physically. That's two dead, or three... Four dead, uh, no, three. Okay. Oh, and another vulture coming in. Can he get a third SCV? Oh, he's going to get into the main, more importantly. He's gonna and he's going to scout the factory, factory count. Yeah? And he's going to see uh, the yeah, armory yeah. as well. This is super important. Like, Marlin is making all the right moves. Infinity and beyond, this is going to be... Uh, this is already dealing so much damage. Wow. What a monster. That's insane. Now, Marwin is actually going three factory Goliath. Like, he is going to go for Goliath drops here. The starport is on the way. This isn't the most common build in TBT because it does straight up lose to... Well, it doesn't straight up lose, but it makes it a big struggle against Siege Rush. But Koge isn't going for a Siege Rush here, I don't think. I believe he may have got Siege Mode already, but he's not aiming to end the game with this. I mean, he's going to try and put some pressure on. But against Goliath, it's going to be difficult. He's going to have to try and break up this ramp. I mean, I, how? Uh, there's those uh, those chrysali, chrys chrysalises that are blocking it. So now, I just like to point out. I think Kogat's actually making a mistake here. He's going into speed on his vultures, but he doesn't really have any vultures. He's got one. Like th uh, he's got two now. Like I, I don't feel like this is really worth it. I think going I for think another upgrade would have been better counter damage by just uh, running them all the way into the main to kind of do the same thing. Speed obviously helps with that, but uh... Look how I, many I Goliaths think... this is, though. And he's got no siege mode still. Yeah, he is doing this mass Goliath thing. I... Mines I mean, Goliaths are coming up aren't now. really good against anything. I mean, they're good against dropships, so eventually when that happens, they'll be good against that, but nothing up until then. Okay, I mean, Kogut's going to save his barracks. This is kind of important. He does have the five factories up already, or at least nearly done. I, I can't help but feel I've missed him researching Siege Road because he's still not got it. Like, he's not even attempting to get it either. I think he's just kind of massing vultures now. Uh, so he's kind of making up for the fact he went... Uh, he went for those early vulture upgrades without having any, but we've already got the dropship out for Marwin. 
And when you get four Goliaths dropped in your main or in your natural when all you're building is vultures, you're going to lose a lot of SCVs. I mean, luckily enough, he does have a good number of tanks, but even tanks struggling against Goliaths are big enough numbers. Well, especially breaking up high ground with Goliaths on top of it, you're just not, not going to have a good time there. Um, whew, all right, well, what are we doing? Um, for Kogit, his plan is finally getting Siege Mode, as well as faster upgrades. And I really like that, because we yeah. did see that armory earlier. It just didn't really do much. Um, so we're finally going to see a faster plus one from Kogit. If he can keep that upgrade advantage to plus two, then you know obviously that's going to be pretty good. Yeah, he's but going for his own stuff right now. Okay, I want to see what Marwin's doing with his starport. Did, did he actually make a dropship? He did. Wait, he's not gone to drop yet. He's kind of keeping it defensively. Okay. Um, I, I agree with this decision. Like, he noticed with his barracks, like, he can see that a vulture was laying mines there and he pulled it back a little bit. So dropping Goliath there is going to be a bit dangerous. And he's just playing... He's putting himself in a posture where Koga isn't going to be able to use vultures to do any damage. Oh, can he cancel this... Uh, Oh, yes, he can. Nice move. Uh, just delays that CC just as much as possible. Yeah, that's a really good pickoff. I mean, what else are you really going to do there? Um, oh, the other good thing about Goliath is that they're good against mines. So yeah. maybe that was kind of what he was thinking, um, is that if he has to run through a minefield, Goliaths are a pretty good way to do that. Okay, so we've got Command Center coming up for Koga as well. He's going to be able to catch up a little bit uh, just based on the fact he did delay that. But Koga is already getting ready in one of the other mains with an SCV. This could just be to scout for dropships. Um, unfortunately, he's not going to see this one going into his main, but he's already got units back here to defend. He's playing very defensively, and that's a good choice. The science facility is coming up. Plus two will start almost immediately, I would say. In, though. Here comes a dropship into the back of Kogut's main. Uh, you don't want to drop off inside of the uh, siege tank, so he's going to drop the rest of the Goliaths on top of the siege tank, which will die. That means that there's nothing back in the main to defend. There are a few uh, spider mines, though. Oh, the pickup at the last second to dodge the mine hit. Oh. Nice. There's a fourth so base coming up from Kogan. Now, one thing uh, that I remember Scan telling me once was when you're behind in TVT, you have to make a big play. Now, either that's you go all in or you play super greedy and hope you're a like you get away with it. And Marwin, unfortunately, well, at least Koga, unfortunately for Marwin, other way around, uh, he's actually sent a SCV down already, so he may be able to see this. The, the dropship's coming back into the main. All the units have driven away. Uh, well, that was obviously not the right uh, decision. There is a Wraith here, but um, unfortunately, Wraiths don't do that well against Goliath. Yeah, uh, same with the Vultures. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Are Goliaths just the best unit? I think so, Kicks. Okay, he does lose two, and the dropship is going to go down now with good micro from Koga. So the Wraith is no, a good choice. Not. Oh, wow, yeah, it I, gets I away. He just drops the Goliath to defend it if he wants to. Okay, these tanks are kind of in a funny position. They're just out of vision range. Oh, no, they can't see it. Killing this dropship would be really, really big. Uh, he should actually go to do that. Now, Marwin's actually got a really big army. His plus one isn't done yet. Uh, it's just finished there, so just as I clicked away. And Kogat has actually got a relatively good position on the map, but he doesn't have that many units there yet. Uh, he's been relying a lot on mines to try and keep Marwin back. But this map is slowly but surely getting split in half. But you can already I mean, see if Marwin you get pushing to that through. Kind of position, I'd be impressed, because it certainly seemed to me like you know Marwin, even with the drops and stuff, is actually doing quite a good job. Yeah, I mean, Kogut's really close in supply still, but his tank count, it's so small comparatively. Like, he needs to get some really good trades. Whether he can do that or not is obviously the big question. And so far, Marwin is just like, dominating his way through here. Ah, there I we go. I nearly said it wrong. It's, it's 12 a.m., man. I'm glad you caught yourself, Kix. I know, I don't blame you. 2 a.m. is uh, rough. I've done it many times, Kix. I've done it many times young grasshopper with these late night casts. Okay, so the Wraith goes in, does lose its life unfortunately. Funnily enough, this single tank at the back is kind of defending this base, uh, but this this is going to be one dead base again. But luckily enough, Koga took this base in the 6 o'clock position, so losing yeah. this gas isn't the end, of the, the end of the world for him. 
Yeah, the six o'clock base is actually really, really good. And oh, but there's I mean, so honestly, many units it's... headed down here though, and he's only got a single tank on this high ground. Like I'm optimistic about defensive posturing in TBT, but <laughs> yeah, that's going to be difficult. Yeah, especially since he's not controlling the high ground. He pulled the tank back, and it's just leaving it there. So that's going to die, and so will the six o'clock base. I mean, does he even have any units he can send over there? He's like slowly sieging his way through the middle of the map. The Goliaths have been cleared up, so he can clear this with wraiths. That's actually an interesting problem. All the Goliaths are dead now, so oh, he really shouldn't be running the tanks through this. Ah, uh, mm, ooh, mm, He ooh. needs to repair these again as well. But the six o'clock base, a lot of the SUVs have actually been transferred away, so they will get away from this. But it's going to be another possible dead CC. The race can't deal with it alone because the Goliaths are there. Yeah, things aren't looking too good for Koga right now. I mean, he's doing a relatively good job cleaning things up. But just look at the amount of units that Marwin has. Oh, Marwin. Yeah, no, Marwin's uh, not only going to kill this bottom base if he wants to, uh, but he's also going to... Actually, wow, these tanks are... Oh my god, is uh, he going to save it? He needs to get an SUV down yeah. there right away. Uh, 100, 122, 121, 120, 119, 118, 117. <laughs> okay, I'll keep an eye oh, on that. I think uh, he's, he's going to let SUV. it die. No, the SUVs are repairing the tanks instead. Yeah, I don't think he's realized how low it is. Oh, the mine's going down in the siege line of Marwin. Marwin, maybe being a little bit too aggressive here. Oh, he's going to save it. He's going to save it. He lifted it. He realizes. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Wow, Marwin just lost so many units. And the big, big story in this game is plus two is done for Koga. And plus two yep. has only just started here for Marwin. This is why these trades are going so badly. Marwin's tanks only take two hits to kill Kogut's right now. And that is such a huge advantage in TBT. And he's still yeah. not cleared up these uh, tanks. Well, also, Kogut's starting to get what is so iconic for TBT, and that is a tank line. Uh, not only protecting his six o'clock base, but he needs to extend this tank line through towards the middle of the map because uh, what it's going to come down to who can control these corner bases. And if you can take your opponent's corner base with a better tank line position, ugh, so good. But right now, Marwin's back at it again, trying to take out the six o'clock base. He's got more units down there, but a scan will actually see them come in on the high ground. And actually, with a good siege line here, Kogut should be able to take this out. Yeah, the, the trouble is, like, Koga is on the low ground, and obviously Vision is going to go to Marwin. The Wraiths are up in oh, the top. No. Yeah, this oh, is no, for that. Oh my. He's on high ground. He scanned at the perfect time. That was so unbelievably lucky, but he does need to target fire. Okay, he loses the four tanks, but he will kill the four tanks from Marwin as well. They're trading so effectively right now, but Marwin is in such an amazing position. He's up two bases on Koga right now. Koga is only just now starting. Oh my god, his gas is going to burn down. Are you... Oh my goodness. Oh, and there's a dropship so coming in from Marwin as well. Uh-oh. Well, the siege tanks are sieging here, so at least the dropships can't drop in. Oh, is he going to drop uh, on mines? Oh dear. Oh... Well, hey, the Cloaked Rays are going to take out the dropships, though, so that's actually kind of nifty. And with the Cloaked Rays Shia surprise, they're going to be able to break into the middle of the map, too. Yep. The, obviously, the Wraiths are really the only thing keeping Koga in this game right now. Killing those two dropships with massive... Marwin, I, I think he's just being too aggressive. Like, he's giving Koga a way back into this game. I mean, Koga was so far behind, and Marwin has just thrown away tank after tank... He's not really added any additional um, additional machine shops right now, which is... I mean, he needs to add them. He's got, uh, I believe that's six gases now. No, five, sorry. Five gases. And when you've got this many gases, you need more tanks. Like, Goliaths, they're not that good. Like, they're going to help you a little bit with the rates, but the main problem is Koget's tanks. Uh, yeah, no, now, not, now Koget not only has tanks, He's sieging down this 9 o'clock base, and the tanks from Marwin are stuck in the middle of the map, yep. which are totally useless. And, I mean, once these raids come in, even those three Goliaths are going to die pretty quickly. He's got like nine cloaked raids here. Yeah, now plus two is done for both players. Kogut, uh, obviously with the upgrade advantage, looks like he has got double armory, but he's only doing one upgrade right now. He did lose his third gas for a long time, so... 
It's a bit difficult. He's not actually mining from his third gas yet. It's only just now starting. So his gas count is really struggling. And it looks like he must have lost the CC somehow in the top right. Because all of a sudden, like, he's building another command center there. I think he must have flown it back yeah, and it well, died or something. Something like that. I, I don't know. Um, well, anyway, hey, the CC is up in the top right. And that means that it's time to start mining off of just crazy bases. This game could actually go the distance kick. Yeah. Uh, I know you want to go to bed, but... I, you know what? I could, I could stay up for another six hours if we get to see a cool TVT. I'm, I'm in. I mean, yeah, good... Good TVTs are a little bit hard to find out there. And this map is very splittable. Um, so I think that's just kind of what's going to happen. Both players are going to split the map. And I think that goes better for Kogan, honestly. Not only does he have better uh, upgrades, or at least faster upgrades, he just started ship plating and ship weapons. This is Kogut's big move. He's going to continue adding on his race. He's adding on other starport. He's obviously at... I'm so confused why Kogut didn't take this base sooner, though. Like, he could have had this a long time ago. He's got... He's had an SUV there forever as well. I think he's just trying to secure the other main. But uh, it looks like uh, Marwin was going for his own wraith switch here, but just not enough. The Valkyries are coming. Starports. And yeah, Valkyries will be able to deal with this. My problem is, where's my BCs, okay? My cattle bruisers, they gotta get out here. Um, I think BCs yeah, are gonna be a little bit away. I think both of them are gonna yeah. stay on race for a while. Uh, obviously losing one of the Valkyries there is a pretty big deal, but yeah. he's pushing into plus three tanks without sieging. It's very, very, oh my God, the mine going down there as well. That's huge. Yeah, it definitely could have been tragic there, but it's actually not. Uh, I mean, there's a mine blocking the bottom left expand, but that should be cleared out here pretty soon. The wraith count is way higher uh, for Kogut. Um, so he is just really, really killing it. He doesn't have cloak energy anymore because they're just coming down off of that cloak. And so now it's going to be about who can control the middle of the map. Yeah, it's also going to be about who is going to mine out first. Now, Marwin obviously secured his bases a lot sooner. So his mineral bank is a lot higher. But this means as time goes on, those bases are going to dry up, and even his gases are going to start to dry up. This is when, in TBT, you need to start trading incredibly efficiently. If you suddenly throw away 20 wraiths or something, you've got, like, if Koga, even though he's in such a good position now, loses all these wraiths suddenly, he's going to be behind. So he needs to be very careful. He needs to start repairing them as well. Oh, the Valkyrie! Yeah. Oh, here we go! The Valkyrie! Is it going to be the game changer there? No. All these wraiths are not. so weak. Yeah, actually, Kogut losing that wraith war pretty heavily. Yeah, he didn't repair the wraiths after the last engagement, and yeah, he's got another six on the way. I mean, let's count the starports. Actually, it, I think it may just be three for Kogut. But as you pointed out before, Marwin, Marwin's got five starports. Possibly, yeah, six starports all pumping rates so there's as long as he keeps trading effectively like there's going to be no way koga is going to be able to win the race roar the the okay i can't say that the wraith war there we go <laughs> yeah that's a that's a tricky one there kicks yikes um so but both players are still just maxing on rays uh but you're, you're right, that heavy commitment to five. Oh, he's going to catch them uncloaked. Oh, he can catch them uncloaked. No, he's not going to. Never mind. Yeah. The missed opportunity by Kogut in the middle of the map. But he does need to start repairing those. I think that's a great way to get some pretty decent value um, because you just need raids a lot all the time everywhere. But I do love this switch. And finally, the physics lab coming down for Kogut. It's interesting that Kogut's going for this first. I mean, I guess he feels like he needs to make something happen like tech is another big option you've got but when you're losing the wraith war like suddenly switching into bcs if they catch your bcs with all their wraiths you just lose the game but we can see koga is trying to push through the middle marwin's got three tanks on the high ground he's coming in for the pincer as koga made a massive error here i mean this is a huge blunder he thinks he can use the wraith but no it's the rays that are being used against him <gasps> How the tides of battle have <laughs> turned, Kicks. Kogut takes a big loss trying to make a push into the natural. Yeah, and 1-1 one, one is done. Ship weapons for both players right now. Kogut hasn't actually gone for 2-2. Two, two. Uh, I wonder if Marwin has. No, it looks like Marwin hasn't either. Uh, so, 
I guess we're in a situation where neither player is going to have an upgrade advantage, but Koga going BCs now, I don't think he can sustain it. Like, he's just lost the vast majority of his tanks. Marwin's going to be able to push through the middle here if he wants to and take down the bottom bases. Although he's pushing the wrong way, I'd say. Yeah, he is actually pushing the wrong way. I expected him to, you know... 1-800-CA... Uh, you did, did you ever get the, the Carrot Top C-A-L-L-A-T-T -T ads? Well, the big, his big slogan was dial down the middle because you can dial C-A-L-L-A-T-T -T right down the middle. So yep. I always want to say that the player needs to just dial it down the middle, head straight down to the southern bases. They're totally undefended. They are supple and ripe for the picking. Just, just go go south, all young I'm, man. All I'm going to say is just while we've got a little bit of a lull in the action, like those American ads always confuse me because on British telephones, you couldn't dial letters. Like that wasn't really a thing. So like, yeah, but the letters are the numbers. Yeah, but we like I didn't know that. So whenever I saw like American ads on like Sky or something, I'd be like, "What? They can <laughs> dial letters? Why would you put letters on phones? Phones are for numbers, kicks." They are. They are. I don't get it, but we can see that Marwin is setting up a strong defensive position here. To be honest, I'm not sure why he's bothering. He should just go back on the high ground. Uh, he's not really securing any additional land here, but uh, Marwin's got a good position in the middle of the map. Kogat starting to go in to his units. Let's see. Oh, no. Here we go. Look at all these raids. Oh, my God. Okay, he's going to pull back. Never yeah, mind. that's that was... a lot of turrets. Like, you need, like, three control groups of rates before you can effectively fly into three turrets and that sounds so stupid but you need to like one shot the turrets otherwise uh it's a little bit dangerous but the map is split entirely within the middle uh obviously marwin is spending a lot more marwin has played so sensibly that he has an 8k bank like koga is spending every little bit of money he's got and here we are the cattle bruisers right here I can't wait until all the rays fly on top of each other. And not only are, like, they all cloaked so we can't see them, but also if you have, like, protonopia or something, like the color blindness that can't see red, they both look exactly the same anyway. So, like, you're just you're just actually not, not <laughs> going to be able to tell what's happening. Everything's just going to shoot everything and something's going to explode. Now, one thing I'd like to just point out as well, look at the minerals on Koget's base. So Koget's third... It's st it still has minerals. It's still well. It's nearly out of gas now. The base for Marwin is completely gone. The fourth base of Marwin is is actually. Oh, I think he took the other main as the fourth base. So things aren't looking too bad. But just look at the amount of rates here, Rapid. This is nearly three control groups, I think. Oh, and he's oh, trading away SUVs. I mean, you have to at this point. You're back. Yep. You need more raids. Like, having one less wraith is like having infinite less wraiths. It's just, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I, maybe you could use your SCVs more effectively. Like, I don't know, drop them somewhere, be annoying. But uh, you just need to get rid of those. Guys, okay. um... Marwin, I think, should so push in now. He's at 2-2 two, two yeah. air weapons, and Kogut's a long way off. So I believe, like, he should just take the race and try and find the BCs. He scanned the physics lab before, I believe. So yeah. this is the moment when you just go in. Well, Marwin just finished the physics lab of his own, and he's adding on his 8th and 9th uh, starports. So, wait, uh, let me count this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, okay, so he's, yeah, 6th and 7th starports. I was a little bit ahead of, ahead of myself there. but Let's take a look. Look at these SCVs. This is what I was talking about. They're actually doing a really good job kind of scouting, but the Wraith RB for Marwin is gigantic. And actually, uh, I, uh, Colossus Reactor, nice. Um, I, wanted, I would want to see Kogate go back into Valkyries. I mean, at this point... You're just going to get value. Yeah, the, I mean, Valkyries are going to be so, so important in this fight. Like, I I even saw a game from, like, 2007 the other day. It was, like, this 50-minute TVT between Hwasin and someone. And it was mass BC against mass Wraith. But there was, like, three Valkyries and they just killed everything. Like, the, I mean, the battle cruisers do enough damage on their own. But here we can see the cloak is coming in. Scans just going around everywhere for both players trying to find out what's going on. This is peak TBT when the map split directly in the middle and then they're just trying to find an opening. And I, I feel like Marwin is almost waiting a little bit too long. Yeah, he is definitely giving Kogut time to get the perfect composition. And I, actually, Marwin's down 20 supply. 
I'm not sure where that came, but here we it go. It was all Moving SCVs. In the race. He's trying oh. to snipe all the battle cruises. He's going to get one. He's going to get two. He's going to get three battle cruises. He's going to take out all of the BCs. That's A so huge. huge. Move by Marwin. Yeah, they all had nearly full energy as well, so that was a Yamato on all of them. And that's that's a massively important spell in TVT. Like, imagine if it yamato those two tanks suddenly, all of Kogut's tanks down here push forward, and that's, they take out a base. That's 30 supply of BCs that just died there. I think that was wow. five, five to seven BCs that just got one shot. So, I mean, obviously both players are building them back five or six at a time, which is crazy. Uh, but now they just don't exist anymore. And there's still infinity rays. This is like way too many raids to count. I, I don't even know. Every time I count one, there's two more. So yeah, ugh. Kogut's adding on up to eight starports as well now. Uh, looks like we do have three, three air weapons and uh, plating almost done here for for Marwin. And I don't think Kogut can afford it right now. Yeah, he's not even upgrading it. But when it comes to BCs, like the upgrades are so unbelievably important. Like in an air versus air battle. Upgrades are everything. Let me, let me, something's not making sense. Why does Kogan have a billion gas and Marwin has none? Um, Marwin's building like eight BCs at a time, man. That's why. Yeah, but like also his, uh, I don't think his gases are, oh, he actually has like eight SCVs on gas in his nine o'clock phase. Um, okay, Marwin has just yeah. cleaned up so many tanks of Kogut's here in the middle of the map. Kogut tried to make that move happen, but because he yeah. didn't have those Yamatos, like, it just didn't work. But look how many turrets there are from Kogut. Like, Kogut is perma-broke on minerals because he's built so many turrets everywhere. But Marwin, let's check his gases. So he's got 1,200 here, 3,000 here. That's depleted. Now, these bases are smaller. But to have them depleted that quickly for Marwin is kind of insane. Oh, definitely. But I think gas is going to define the rest of this game, right? I mean, obviously you will need minerals and you can still mine gas geysers depleted. But um, I, I, I think this is going to be better for Kogut, right? Kogut has more minerals. He's got more mining bases. It all comes down to the big air fight here because if... like. If Marwin can get, like, the perfect engagement, I mean, we're at seven... If you think about it, seven BCs for Koga, he was building off of three starports. Marwin is building eight BCs at a time. And oh my god, he's going for a snipe. Here we go. Can he get many of them? He gets one. But this... Oh my god, the rates are all dying. He only gets two of the BCs. Uh-oh, I think that might have been it. Yeah, the BCs needed to be reset, and now actually the wraith count for... Marwin is zero, right? Marwin does not have any more rays. Yeah, I mean, he does need to just build BCs, and he is adding on another... He actually can't afford all the BCs at once. Uh, he doesn't have enough yeah. gas, so... Marwin has 10k minerals and 3k gas. That's uh, not quite the, the ratio you're looking for, you know? But look at the BC count. There's eight already. There's another six building at the moment. Jeez, Louise. But, you know, it's not all about BCs. Oh, uh, science EMP. Science are super important, and so EMP is going to be the big factor. That's why we see it researching by Kogut. And Kogut's if going mass wraith. EMP... Oh, yeah, so it's going to be wraith science vessel with a little bit of BCs versus almost pure BC uh, from, from Marwin. Thing is, Marwin is going to have turrets. He's going to have goliaths. Like, he doesn't need to push with the BCs. Like, eventually... He's going to have to make a switch on the ground back to Vultures. But look, we're going to see some Yamatos coming in here, I think. He's got enough energy. This is actually really hard to Yamato. Like, here we go. Can he make it happen? Yamato! He does it! There we go. That's that's value. It's free real estate. Yeah. <laughs> the tomato cannons really kick it in there. I think the, the biggest thing for me is the opportunity cost. Because, yeah, in, uh, energy is infinite, you know. But, uh, but it... You know, you don't get it all at once. You've got to like bide your time. So now that he's used that all that energy, Kogut knows there's no more Yamato that he has to worry about the counter Yamato. You know, maybe there's yeah. a few, but actually, wow, there's actually quite a bit. Never mind. Belay that order. There's actually 15 battle cruisers. Yeah, he needs to make sure he doesn't get EMP though. If he gets EMP, yeah. that resets everything. Keep in mind, it's 2-2 two -two versus 3-3 three -three air, and 3-3 three -three is only halfway done for Kogut, so he really cannot fight this. The longer this game goes on, the better it is for Kogut. 
um, because he does need time to get that uh, those uh, those upgrades. I would say it's actually better for Marwin because uh, the, the problem, like this, is a really interesting thing with TVT. And I mean, I'm a lower level Terran, but whenever whenever you see these kinds of games, even at the pro level, like rates. Wraiths are kind of like a one-shot hope. Like, we saw it with Marwin before. He tried to fly in to kill all the BCs, and all the Wraiths died. And he killed one BC or something. Like, if Kogit can't... Oh, here we go, another Yamato. Oh, and he gets it off before it dies. Nice. He's going to push forward. He's got no ground units up on this high ground anymore. Oh, my God. Really? Oh, yeah. get the science vessel, too. Oh, oh God, that's well, massive. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, this is where the raids could come in. Oh, the vessel's going around for the BCs. All right, is it going to get it? Are they going to get them? EMP. Yeah. Oh, look at oh! That got almost all the BCs. I all but one. one Yamato in yeah. All of them. What a god. That is the sickest move. But all of the turrets have been cleared. He can push up onto the high ground with his tanks now. And Koga, who doesn't have any minerals, can't replenish his army very easily. It's not like he's Protoss. He doesn't have See, something like is, a Templar. Koga, Koga does have a lot of mineral patches. He just doesn't have very many SCVs mining them. Oh, uh, um, yeah. He, he could add on an easy 20 SCVs and actually saturate all these minerals. Oh, here we go. It's going to be BC versus problem. BT Yamato. Oh my god. Kamehameha! Here come the cloaked rays in. They're trying to snipe all the BCs. I actually think these cloaked rays are going to deal insane amounts of damage. Yeah, they're actually starting to whittle down the battle cruiser count. He's going to kill all the battle cruisers with cloaked rays. Thanks. Oh my god, this is huge. Marwin took the worst possible engagement there. Koga with some amazing Yamatos popping in. Oh, that is very, very bad for Marwin. Marwin. Is going to be depleting his gases soon. He is going to be mining... How many bases does he have? One, two, three, four, five, six. He's going to be mining six gas per trip across six bases soon. <laughs> no, it's it, you, it's two. Don't you mine two gas? On oh, I thought it was guiders? one. Sorry. My bad. Is it so, one or two? So it'll I be 12. It it'll be 12 then. You can't okay, check, can, can you? Somebody can tell me if it's, if it's one or two on depleted geysers, but I believe it's two. I could be totally stupid and wrong at that. I don't mind for too many depleted geysers, guys. Yeah, it's, I thought it was two. Okay, so yeah, okay. 12 gas plus six bases, but uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm anyway. the tanks again. So that was a big move, because now the one difference between these two players is that uh, Koket has a massive supply of raids. Let me just check this. He's got, uh, what is this? Marwin's uh, going for the triple... Bottom. Yamato, a little but... over a supply group, but here we go. More Yamatos coming in for Kogan, obviously, because he A has more battle cruisers and B has more energy because he didn't get them uh, uh, depleted. Oh, six depleted gases, one and a half regular gases. Yeah, wow, that's one way to look at it. So Marwin's still in an okay position economically, but he doesn't have the uh, the impetus. Koga's got a lot to work with in the form of units that can do stuff. But hey, here's the Remax on BCs. They don't all have Yamato, though, or Yamato. It's Wait, which is it? Yamato. Is it really Yamato, like with the accent yeah. on the A? I always said the second A accented, Yamato. That's like the American way of saying it, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's better than uh, Artosis saying Yamoto, which is like, what? What is, oh my god, Artosis and Reading, name less <laughs> iconic duo. Here we go, we're going back in again, huge raid fight versus battle cruisers. I think the Rays are just killing it right now. Yeah, he doesn't have enough seven, support. Count reset. Like, he's been fighting away from his turrets the whole time, so the, the Rays are just doing so much. Wow. Even though the economy was much better for Marwin, I think Kogit is finally exhausted him. Yeah, Marwin has 200 gas, and that's about it. I mean, both of them have minerals still, so there's still minerals. We're not fully I mined out yet. Tech switch. Okay, you know what? I'm going to hide the uh, unit pain now, because until we, we get something happening, we don't need to see it. We can see more of this wonderful TVT action, but... Hide the, hide the, uh, the supply and the names as well. Yeah, let's, let's look at this panoramic view. Look at this right now. Actually, you know what would be amazing if you, if you hide the mini-map? <laughs> Don't do that. That would make it impossible to play. This is, this is dope. I love doing this. Um, yeah. I, I think the army supply advantage for Koga is going to be gigantic, right? 
is, I mean, he's already got a massive army. He had more SCVs, so he does have more SCVs still, but... Marwin just, he can't catch a break. Like, every time he rebuilds a BC, that's time for Koga to get his mana back on all of his BCs. So, well, I guess energy. Uh, my bad. But yeah, it's... You know, Kix, there was this Star, there's this Star Wars uh, RTS called Empire at War. Yep. And when you actually had an air battle or like a space battle, all your Star Destroyers and stuff. Whoa, here we go. Pew, 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 pew. So many Yamatos. Yamatos, look at those going off. The giant Kamehamehas flying across the screen. Um, the Wraith count's actually really dwindled here for Kogan, but his BC count is left unchanged. Um, basically, so in that Star Wars uh, MMO, you get into a space battle, and there's a button. I think the hot key was, was uh, C for cinematic. And yeah. cinematic view, where it would peel all the overlays away, and you could just watch the fight happen. <laughs> and in an RTS game, that's obviously the most disgusting, stupid thing that you could do. But from a cinematic point of view, it would do all these sweeping camera angles in 3D. There was I think so Sins of like, a Solar Empire did that as well. It's a really cool feature. Empire. Yeah, yeah that's less of, a, less of an RTS, though, more of a strategy game. Yeah. But the idea is still the same. And actually, that would be so sick in Brood War. Actually, can you? what's the hotkey to hide everything? Is it Alt H? There's a hotkey to hold. No, Alt H is the help help menu. I don't think you can hide everything at once. Yeah, yeah. There's a button to peel it all away. But anyway, you could hide everything, and that would make it very cinematic. That's my point. Okay. Well, we've got 12 wraiths. He's trying to. Fo oh, he gets the vessel, but he's trading like the last. Oh, that was a nice pull on the uh, tank there. Oh, this well, micro. See, this is like a little oh my goodness. Man. They traded Wraith perfectly there. What the heck, Marwin? Wait, there's, there's one Wraith left over. What what game is... What? I think this is going to be like the game of Pac-Man after Pac-Man eats one of those big balls. And the Vultures are coming in now. He's going to use mines to try and take down the tanks. I mean, that's going to work, right? Nope. I mean, almost. Nope. Nope, not really. Anyway. I mean, he's got 8k bank, so you got to do something with it, right? Yeah, let's count the minerals. So Marwin is very close to mine now. He's probably got about a thousand... ...ish minerals. 1,200 maybe. Uh, Kogut's other main... Picks. ...is nearly full. Like, he has... He, he's just rich, right? He's richy rich right now. Well, the game continues, Kicks. Hour 25,000, and uh, we've still got tanks, battlecruisers, and rays out on the map, so... Yeah, th this is just too many BCs, though. Like, there's absolutely yeah. nothing Marwin can do anymore. Like, he traded so badly in so many air wars that... Kogut's just... He's doing it, man. Look at all the Yamato that's about to come out here. It's like, so many Yamato. Oh my god, they switched into Wraith again. But there's just far too many BCs. The Wraiths are just immediately dying. Kogut's done it. Yeah. He's broken through. There's yeah, going to be... Kogut's flexing on him at this point. He, he's really putting the guns to use here. More cloaked Wraiths to come in, but an instantaneous scan. They all die. I mean, they could have just gotten yamato there, yamato But GG, a 41 minute, 17 second game. No six minute curse this time, Kicks. What? Yeah. That was a really end. sick Damn. TVT. That, like, I am a big fan of TVT, and out of all the TVTs in the STPL that I've casted, and you know what? I'm going to bring up a stat for you if I've got the thing open. Yeah. Which I don't. Okay. Uh, I can't remember exactly, exactly how many it was. Let me actually just double check on Discord. Send it to you. So, throughout season one, we casted 112 TVTs. And without a yeah. doubt, that is the best one we've done. So, awesome start sure. to SCPL Season 2. Amazing. Yeah. What a way to do it. Well, in the end, congratulations. Kogut gives Net Wars the 3-2 the win in the ace match over IRK uh, to put them, uh, to give them the win. Wow. What a... What a monstrous performance. That, that last game was so much fun. And I know it's late kicks, but I think it's, yeah. that game was worth sacrificing a little bit of sleep over. It was. I would happily watch that 